Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to record and play audio with Swift and Xcode. So let's go ahead and get started. So you just press record and that starts recording my voice. I say stop, it stops the recording and then press you can play. And that starts recording my voice, I say stop. Like so. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is open up Xcode, create a new Xcode project, and this will be a single view application, although this does apply to everything else. Click next. Our product name, I'm just going to call this Recorder. You can, of course, call this whatever you want. Our language will be set to Swift, and our devices will be set to Universal. Click Next and Create. All right, so first thing we need to do is head over to our main.storyboard, and right in here, we're actually going to add, as soon as my computer loads it up, we are going to add the buttons that say Record and Play. So first, I'm going to make this a bit bigger. Head over to my buttons right down here. So go right down here, add a button right over here, and also a button right over there, like so. So this first button will be record, and the second button will be play. So we're gonna play the recorded audio from this button. I'm making this slightly wider so we can change text in it later, but you don't really have to worry about that. Let's go ahead, open up the assistant editor, and now in the assistant editor, I'm going to right click or control click and drag from my record button over to my viewcontroller.swift. And I'm just going to add an outlet. So I'm going to call this my record BTN. You can of course call this whatever you want. Connect. And then we also have our play button. So right click or control click and drag from our play button over to our viewcontroller.swift and this will be our play BTN. Connect. And now we have outlets for our play button and our record button. And now also with these buttons right here, we also wanna add some actions. So with this record button, we're going to right click or control click and drag over to our viewcontroller.swift and we're going to set insert a connection and this will be an action. The name of this action, I will call this record. We are going to start recording as soon as this action is called. And now we also need to right click or control click and drag from this play button over to our viewcontroller.swift change the connection type to an action, and this will be our play sound. So we're now, when this button is pressed, we want to play sound. Now that's everything we need to do with the connections, so let's actually close that up. Head over to our viewcontroller.swift now, and now inside of this, we need to set up our AV player, or our AV audio recorder. So in here, we're gonna just say import AV foundation. So we're pretty much going to import everything that handles sound with our device. And then we're going to go over to the class here, and then right after our UI view controller, we go comma, AV audio player delegate. So now this is going to allow us to delegate the player on our device to play the audio. And then we also need our AV audio recorder delegate, like so. And now we'll be able to control our recorder and our player. Now we just need to apply some variables to these. So let's go right down here, and we're gonna say var sound recorder will be equal to AV audio recorder, open parentheses, close parentheses, and now we have our sound recorder that we again can apply when we say if we click record, now we can apply some variables onto that sound recorder and that'll allow us to record that sound. And now we need a variable that handles the sound being played. So we're gonna say var sound player will be equal to, and this is going to be an AV audio player like so, and then open parentheses, close parentheses. Now, first thing we're gonna do is create a new function right down here, and this is basically going to allow us to set up everything, all the variables that are inside of our recorder. So we're gonna say func, and this will be set up recorder, like so, and then open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket, and inside of this, we're gonna go var record settings, will be equal to, and then this is open square bracket, close square bracket. So inside of this, we're going to have all our settings built into an array. So what do we want in our array? Well, first we want an AB format ID key, and this will be equal to a K audio format Apple lossless right here. So we're gonna have lossless audio as our format. And if you're familiar with how audio actually works, we need to have an encoder, a bit rate, a sample rate, and the number of channels. So we're also going to add this into our record settings. And I'm actually gonna change the variable name to settings, like so. So right in here, we're going to, right after this comma, let's just go ahead and click enter, tab all that in. That way we get a bit more separated. And I'm gonna say AV encoder audio quality key. And then this will be a colon, and then this will be equal to an av audio quality dot max. 
dot raw value. So we're having the raw value and this is going to be our audio quality. We're grabbing the max quality from our audio. And then after that you put a comma, enter, and now inside of this we're going to encode our audio with a bitrate key. So we're going to say AV encode bitrate key. And then after this you do a colon and our bitrate will be equal to 320 kilobits per second, so 320,000. Now Apple actually sells iTunes Music at 256 kilobits per second, so you could make that at that, but I'm going to stick with 320,000, which is what Spotify does and other things like that. Now after this, add a comma and we need to say AV number of channels key and then we need a colon and this will be equal to two. We have two channels total. And then lastly, we do AV sample rate key and then colon and this will be equal to 44,100. Point zero. If you want to look into a lot of these numbers, go ahead, look it up, but I can't really explain everything to you, so we're going to continue on. And also just make sure there's a space between the zero and the bracket here. Now that we have all those recording settings filled in, we're going to go down here and we're going to say var error, and this will be an ns error, like so. So if we have an error, this will let us know if we have an error, and we'll test accordingly if we have that error. Now after this, we also need to say sound recorder will be equal to av audio recorder, and then open parentheses, and this will be of a URL settings and error. Now our URL, we're actually going to add another function in order to get this URL. So I'm gonna go down here and say func get file URL, open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket. And right after the get file URL, open parentheses, close parentheses, we want a return value of an NS URL. So we're gonna add an arrow like so and then ns url. So we're expecting a url to be returned. Now the file url that we want to grab is let path will be equal to, and actually we need to create another function for us to grab exactly where this path is. So we're gonna say func git cache directory, like so, and then we want to return value of a string, so I'm going to add an arrow and then string, like so. And then after that, you go open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket. And now we're going to grab some paths. So, so these paths are basically where our audio file would be held. So we're going to say let paths equal ns search path for directories in domains. And then this domain will be an ns search path directory like so, dot document directory. So we want to search through the documents that are inside of our application. And then our domain mask will be equal to an ns search domain mask, like so, dot user domain mask, like so. Expand tilde, we're just going to equal true. And then after this, we're going to say as an array of strings, like so. So this is an array of strings that we just created. And now we're going to return a string value to the string that we have right here. So we're going to say return paths, open square bracket, close square bracket, zero, like so. So we're grabbing the first path that's in there for our audio file. And then inside of our get file URL right in here, we can say let path equal. And inside of this, we can say get cache directory. So we're calling this function up here again. And we're going to say dot string by appending path component like so. So we're going to grab a string according to what this path component is called. We're going to grab where this is stored according to our file name. Now we don't exactly have our file name written down, so let's go up here and we're going to create a new variable. So I'm going to say var file name will be equal to open quotation mark, close quotation mark, and this will be audio file dot m4a. Now you can use other formats, but for some reason .mp3 doesn't exactly work, but .m4a is the way I'm going right now. So now inside of this let path equal get cache directory, we can put right inside of the string our file name, like so. And then after this, we're going to say let the file path be equal to, and this is going to be an ns url, open parentheses, file url with path, and inside of this we're going to put the path that we just created. So basically just to round up exactly what happened right now, we have the get file url right here, and right off of this we just created a file path. Now this file path is equal to an ns url, which is based off of us just grabbing 
the documents off of the device itself, and then we're finding a path with the components of our file name, and then we're just applying that path onto our file path. And now we can say return a value of file path. And then we just need to add an exclamation point right after that. Now if we were to head back up to our setup recorder up here, we can say sound recorder equals AV audio recorder. Our URL will now be equal to our get file URL, like so. Our settings will be equal to exactly what we created up here. So just type in record settings, and then we're gonna say as, and then this will be equal to an open square bracket, close square bracket. And at first we have an NS object on the left side right here. So we're gonna type in NS object and then colon, and this will be any object on the other side, like so. And if there's an error, we want to say this is equal to an ampersand error, like so. And now we wanna go down here and say if let error equal error, meaning that there is an error inside of our programming, we want to print a line. So we're gonna say NS log something's wrong, like so. So now it knows we have an error. And if there is not an error, we wanna just say else, open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket, and inside of this we wanna say sound recorder.delegate will be equal to self. So now our view controller itself is going to delegate the sound recording. And then we're gonna say sound recorder dot prepare to record. So now we're preparing the sound recorder to record. So now we're actually going to get this thing to start recording. So let's go down here and we're gonna go down to our record and right down here inside of our function that we created right down here, we want to change this sender equal to a UI button like so. Now in this, we wanna say if our sender dot title label dot text is equal equal to and say this is equal to record like so so if it says record in the text then we want this to happen like so and then close off the curly bracket so now what do we want to happen? Well, we wanna say sound recorder dot record. So now we're actually going to start recording. Now we also wanna change the text that's on our UI button. So let's go ahead and just say sender dot set title. And then our title will just be equal to capital S-T-O-P and for stop. And then for the control state, and I'm gonna just type in dot normal like so. And then we need to go down here and say play button dot enabled and we're gonna set this equal to false as well since because we're recording we can't play an audio that's not recorded so we're gonna set that not enabled anymore now if this is not the case then we just need to say else open curly bracket enter close curly bracket and we're gonna say sound recorder dot stop so we're stopping the recording and then we're gonna say sender dot set title and we're gonna set this equal to capital R C O D R D or whatever record dot normal. Now inside of our muted load we want to all we want to call this function setup recorder. So we're just gonna go put that right inside of my view did load, so setup recorder. And now if we were to build around this, you will see that I am getting this error. So it's a sound recorder equals AB audio recorder. And then this is exception bad access. Now the cause of this is actually because my sound recorder would be equal to, and we want this to be equal to an optional value. So I'm going to say var sound recorder colon uh, AV audio recorder and then exclamation point like so. And we wanna do this with our AV audio player as well. So colon and exclamation point. Now if we were to build around this, now we have no more errors. And when we click record, we can record and then we can stop the recording. Now, as you can see, play is not being activated again and we also need to work on a few more things. So let's head back over to our project. Now inside of this record button right here, we're also gonna go into this else statement and say play button dot enabled and we're gonna set this equal to false like so. Now with our play sound, we also want to play the sound. So inside of my play sound, I'm also gonna change the sender equal to a UI button like so. And then right in here, we also wanna add a few if statements. So say if the sender dot title label dot text will be equal to or is equal equal to open quotation mark close quotation mark capital p l a y for play and then we want to have an open curly bracket enter close curly bracket like so in this we want our record button dot enabled equal equal to false we don't want to record while we're playing our audio and then we want to say sender dot set title and we're going to set this equal to open quotation mark close quotation mark stop 
And then for our for state, we're gonna just say dot normal, like so. So as soon as we click this button, we're gonna disable our record button. We're going to change our play button to stop. And now down here, we wanna prepare a player, but first we need to create a new function. So let's go right down here. And this will be an audio player. This will prepare the player to play our recorded audio. So we're gonna say var prepare player, and then open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket like so. Oh, and sorry, this should be funk, not var. I don't know why I typed that in. And it also looks like I ha added one too many of the closing curly brackets. Now inside of our prepare player here, first thing we're just going to add is sound player will be equal to an AV audio player, like so. Open parentheses, contents of URL, and this URL will be equal to our get file URL. So as you can see, adding those functions make it a lot easier for us to do things later on. Now this error, I'm going to just put ampersand error. So if there is an error, we'll know about it. Then down here, we're gonna say if let error equal error, like so. Then we just want to say open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket, and you can really just put whatever you want. It's going to be an NS log for me, open quotation mark, close quotation mark, bunch of gibberish. It really doesn't matter what I put in here. I just know there's going to be an error. And also I forgot to put up here, we need to create a new variable, and this will be var error colon NS error, and then a question mark. Now again, after this if statement right here, we wanna put an else statement. And this is basically, everything's running smoothly, so we wanna say sound player.delegate will be equal to self, like so. And then we wanna say sound player.prepare to play. And then lastly, sound player dot volume. And you can set this whatever you to whatever you want. I'm going to make mine equal to 1.0 like so. Now let's head back up to our play sound function right up here, and we're just gonna type in prepare player, like so. So we're calling this function right down here from this button. And now lastly, we just need to say sound player dot play, like so. Now there's also an else statement in this, so right after the if statement, we wanna say open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket, and we're gonna say sound player dot stop. So once our title of our button that we're clicking is stop. We want to say sound player dot stop. Then we're going to say sender dot set title and we're going to set the title equal to open quotation mark, close quotation mark. And this will be equal to play. So we're setting it back to its normal state. And then we're going to say dot normal like so. Now, if we were to build and run this, we shall finally have our recorder working and running. So let's say record. Now, as you can see, I clicked stop, but my play button didn't actually come online again. So let's go over here and I'm gonna say, and right down here, I wanna say audio recorder did finish recording. And inside of this, we're just going to quickly say play button dot enabled, and we're gonna set this equal to true. And now I also want to say audio player, audio player did finish playing. Then we also wanna say our record button dot enabled, and we will set this equal to true as well. Build and run. Now one thing you'll notice is that if I press record right now, I hit stop, I hit play, and then as you will see, the stop doesn't go back to play again. So I have to click stop and then play to hear my recording again. So let's head back over to our project and go to the audio player did finish playing function right down here. And I'm just gonna say play button dot set title. And we're gonna set the title equal to open quotation mark, close quotation mark, play. And then for the state dot normal, like so. Then close that off, build and run. And there you have it. I hit record like so, stop, play. And then it goes back to normal as soon as the audio is finished playing. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more tutorials like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.